easy to break into the radio business. I mean, damn, everyone thinks that Howard Stern or Casey Kasem or even Ryan Seacrest. Uh, which is why this week on Tomboy T Rod. Not Tyrate or T Ray. But T Rod, Asia's biggest and only all female comedy chat podcast, we're going to literally break all the rules, girls. By actually breaking into a radio station. Okay everyone, mic's down, hands up. Stop the recording! That's right, because for today, Tombo Tira is on air. Who run the world? Girls. Who run the world? Uh, Obama. Obama. Obama! Jesus, wrong. I mean like, who run this mother? Who run this mother? What? 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 Come, Come on. Mother? Wow. My mother? Oh, guys! Come on here, give me a hand. Haven't you heard a Beyonce song? Alright, one more time, okay? Who run the world? Girls, that's who? And more galactic than a supermassive black hole. Introducing Asia's biggest and only all-female English comedy chat podcast. Welcome to Tomboy T Rod. That hurts. Oh. oh, 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 it's you! Stay away from me, biatch! That's right, you better learn to say my name. Huh? What name? Ginny Sarasvati, that's what? Host of Melbourne's popular new The Ginny Show, Curry Comedy and Connectivity, where I invite listeners to follow the hilarious journey life of a young Sri Lankan immigrant woman growing up in Australia. How come I don't get a show? I'm an immigrant from Hong Kong and I still have my original accent. I have a lot to share. You know what, Joanna? I think it's because no one understands dim sum, okay? Oh, that was so funny. <laughs> Brought me to tears. Hey, okay. where is City? Anyone? Yeah, where is she? Someone, let me in. My friends are in there. Go away. They're my hostages now. Trying to break into a radio station? <laughs> Bad idea. Oh, you're so asking for it. I'm so going, so going to... Wait outside. Good. You do that. And don't come back. Oh, you wait. You wait. Persis, Raven, Joanna... Hold on, I'll be back with reinforcements. I have a plan. Come back soon, Sydney. Come back soon! Oh, look, it's almost 3pm. Almost time for me to record my next segment. All about Ginny. And I could use you guys. Move it. Come okay. on. Uh, okay, okay. 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 Oh, Jesus, All stop right. so oh. hard. Oh. Sit. Here are the interview questions and Mike. Ginny, we're ready to record in two. Thanks, guys. Now I need to record this bio segment and you need to ask me these questions. Capiche? Okay, cool it, cool it, chill. Not with you guys. You're too dangerous. I've got my eye on you. I've got this decker pointed in your direction, huh? 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 Oh, hey, 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 put that away, Joanna. If she sees you with it, she might give us another round of ass whooping, okay? And just don't worry, I'm prepared this time to do some serious slaying. Shh. Shh. Guys, I'm ready. Okay, tomboys? So, you, what's your name? Uh, p p, -p persist Persist. N no, Persis. 
curses? No, no, it's purr, like a cat purring, you know, the thing that goes meow meow. And sis, short for sister. Right. So Burmese, you ask the first question and you do the introduction, okay? Uh, yes, ma'am. And and you with the uh the Bruce Lee accent. Yes. You take questions two and four. Okay, no problem, boss. And you with the weird glasses and whiny voice. Excuse me. You take question three. You got that? I do not whine. Okay. Oh, wait, you're Singaporean, right? Yeah. There you go. Okay, everyone, recording in three, two, one. You're on the air. The Ginny Show. We welcome you in with open arms and leg. Just arms. Welcome to the Ali Ginny segment of The Ginny Show, where we will shoot questions to our amazing guest, Ginny Saraswati. Whoa, 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 wait, 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 wait. What are you doing? Why are you talking in that accent? Oh, don't worry about that. Plus, is a split personality. And there is no cure for it. Oh. Her therapist says there's about 100 documented people living inside of her. Yeah, her normal accent will return in a moment. Don't worry. I, okay, you, you guys are psycho. Okay, so go on. Uh, thank you. And Ginny was born in Dehiwala in Colombo, Sri Lanka, and she grew up as a shy girl with dreams of being a doctor. Like every good Sri Lankan girl, until the Spice Girls came along. She joined Australia's first and only LGBTIQ station, Joy 94.9, in June 2007, and burst onto the scene with her quirky sense of comedy, quick wit, pop culture, and music knowledge coming to life on the airwaves and growing into the personality she is today. What was it like growing up as a Sri Lankan in Australia, Ginny? Thank you, Burmese. That's a great question. Um, it was actually, for me, it was, I felt very grateful growing up in Australia because when my family left Sri Lanka, it was uh, just starting to heat up with the civil war there. So I came to Australia when I was two. I had no idea what we were doing in this strange land. I remember my auntie greeting us at the airport. She was in these bright green overalls and there were some photos taken of us. I'm like, geez, why did you put me in that as my first like welcoming <laughs> outfit? And you know, my, fa- my family were all there with the cameras like, oh, they are here. Let's take photos. And I had this big ass <laughs> clip in my hair, which was the size of my head. And, um, mm. you know, I was looking around, I'm like, I want to go home. And my mom's like, well, this is home now. And I was so pissed off at my family for making such a big decision without including me in it that as soon as we got to my auntie's mm. house, I drew on her wall. I was that upset. <laughs> so um, <laughs> that was my way of kind of rebelling graffiti infant style. Um, didn't quite get me my way. We've been in Australia for the next 30 years. So it didn't quite work. But, hey, I'm all about expressing your creativity, even if you're two years old. It was more about like they're taking the crayons like <laughs> I'm gonna show my mommy. <laughs> I think I think I think I would have liked to take in that kind of avenue, you know, with your own soundtrack. It's like, you know, infant attitude with a soundtrack. I like that. The <laughs> That's great. All that pent up anger. Yeah. At two years old, you start young. Absolutely. <laughs> It's never too early to express yourself, that's what I say. You have like icons of Salonese descent. How have you adjusted to life in a foreign country and brought those experiences to media? It's actually very interesting you say that because I remember when I started school, you know, it, it was in the early, very early 90s and migration uh, wasn't as prominent here. And I remember living in a very, uh, let's just say, Anglo suburb and um, I didn't mm. see any Sri Lankan or, or brown people. Um, I was just thinking mm. to myself, can you imagine if Beyonce songs were around at that time, how much more included I would have felt <laughs> and empowered I would have felt to use some of her lines. But there was like a brown teacher named Miss Audrey and instantly, you know, I was gravitated towards her and I remember yeah. not seeing many Sri Lankan kids. And when we moved to a more kind of Asian um, filled suburb, I had a lot more Sri Lankan friends and I just was like a moth to a flame. But it was just, um, it was interesting growing up and it's funny because I always make this joke at parties when they ask me similar questions saying, oh, you know, you had no Sinhalese people. They were, you know, MIA. I went, well, it's funny because yeah. the only Sri Lanka we had out there was called MIA who, um, you know, <laughs> re- represented all of us. I'm like, oh, what, a, what an interesting name. And I, I, I don't know the history behind 
am I naming herself that clearly she's an amazing yeah. artist but uh, it yeah, was interesting kind of finding your own because you don't have a set guideline and you're growing up in this western society and your aunties are telling you how to live and you're like doesn't quite fit with me but yo, uh, you do your thing that's cool I know because like I feel like even like for me I mean I'm diaspora as well but I'm more from the Indian South Indian side right uh, from yeah. Kerala yeah. Uh, yeah and it's so funny like I always tell like some of my friends who are India Indians or Ceylonese from Sri Lanka or Pakistan or other South Asian uh, nations right they'll be like how come you don't, you're not into Hindi films and Bollywood and all that all that jazz and I'll be like because I'm too black for all these Hindi stuff I'm too black okay I'm too black yo 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 <laughs> It's funny, we, we, it's, for you it's measured that way. For me, like, I remember going to, back to Sri Lanka after I migrated here for the first time. I remember, like, our family friends yeah. saying to me, like, look, Padma, you've raised her just like a Sri Lankan girl. She's got no <laughs> tattoos. Her hair is the same color. So that's how to de- define your Sri Lankanness by the lack of tattoos, your, your hair <laughs> color that you have, uh, and the clothing sorry. that you wear. I mean, if you are pretty conservative on all three, they'll dub you Sri Lankan. Yeah. So I, I dodged the radar on that one. But then I came out as gay and it kind of spoiled the whole three but you know we're good uh, <laughs> <laughs> then they would have gone like damn that girl should have just colored her head done the tattoos you know it's like hey yo if only she was if only she got that tattoo what was the I, I know this is not not on the on the list but what was the reaction on, I mean really like what was the reaction to when you came out of the closet it, it's interesting and I talked about this in one of my episodes just recently um for me I kind of didn't want to come out and make an announcement because I understand coming out it has been a process that it was necessary for our community to kind of educate people on you know these this is a gay community here gay, gay people are okay mm. they just fall in love they just happen to fall in love with the same gender and I understand that mm. coming out was attributed to that kind of evolution of our community I hope that one day we can live in a post coming out world where we don't have to actually go hey this is what's going on you can say this is yeah. who I'm in love with so I didn't want to actually come out but I was on a tv program um in Melbourne that aired Monday nights um it was mm. a, a, a gay tv program and Funnily enough, my auntie was tuning in and watching it. Why she was watching yeah, gay Yeah, t- it's a Monday night. Yeah. Well, the thing is, the, the question here for me isn't, okay, you know, I, my coming out story had to do with a TV show, but why was my auntie watching gay TV on a Monday night? Like, she dodged that <laughs> bullet. So she she saw me on there. I didn't actually say I was gay. There was gay content on there. So she put two and two together, and then she rings my auntie. She's like, Ranjika, did you hear Ginny is gay? And then Pranita, did you hear Virginia is gay? So it went all through the Sri Lankan gate grapevine oh, my local Sri Lankan grocer knew and you know he started the, this Sri Lankan grocer that my family have been going to for the past 20 years he, he started treating mm. me differently so I'm like okay okay Mofa I'm not gonna eat your shitty food and pay money for it so um <laughs> it just <laughs> so, so coming out for me like I've gotten mixed reaction mostly you know my aunties stop asking me when I'm getting married and why haven't I met a nice boy but I think mm-hmm. it's just uh, with all the marriage equality talk that's going on in Australia and you know USA obviously declaring it legal across the land I think those mm-hmm. sort of movements have helped to kind of yeah. for yeah. want of a better mm-hmm. word normalize our community yeah you know, when you first talk about being on TV, I thought you were going to tell us that you came out on TV. <laughs> I didn't expect that. Yeah, I was going to say, I was like, oh my God, you came out on TV on a Monday night? Wow, <laughs> on a Monday night, yeah. What, Coming awesome. out is more a Saturday night kind of thing, what, you know? Exactly. <laughs> or, a Friday, or a TGIF thing. You know, I was like, weekend. I was thinking too, like, with me, I thought my... my I didn't mean to come out obviously on TV, but I thought that was rather considerate of me because rather than calling together my 400 cousins into one party, I delivered it to them in the comfort of their own home on a TV screen. You're welcome. (laughs) (laughs) You use your auntie without you knowing. Exactly. Exactly. It's the Ginny Show. The Ginny Show. Oh, our lonely days are gone. It's magic, I know. I think it will be fun. Come on. Hello my friends, welcome to episode 9. It's the last episode for season 1, before I knock off for the holidays. Over the last three weeks, I was racking my brain on what I was going to make the season finale podcast about. I'd ponder on it every day. I thought I'd have to make it a mega powerful one to leave a lasting impression. 
Did I have to finish with an ending which would have you throwing confetti or rice at your devices? One that would tug at your heartstrings and leave you hanging for more Ginny next year, hoping that you'll hear the theme songs in your ears yet again, just longing. Okay, so I'm being slightly dramatic. As you can see, I was thinking a lot about this episode. Truth be told, thinking too much about something that actually wasn't happening at the time, it got me a little nervous. But let's face it, we can't deny that the world has been sitting in some nervous energy over the past few weeks. Where there is a power shift in some part of the world, generally there's a slight shift in that particular nation's energy. And by energy, I'm not talking about the fluffy stuff. I'm talking about actual energy. The kind physics and other forms of science have proven to exist. Energy is made up of what we think, what we feel, how we act. Every time we think, feel and act, we are creating energy and adding to an energy field. Lately, as a person who works in media, I've been plugging into that nervous energy as well. I've been watching news, media outlets, reading tweets, articles, live feeds, podcasts, you name it. I just wanted to know more. I'd see fear in what I read. I felt fear from what I read. I know I wasn't the only one plugging into that energy. The more I read, the more energy I'd plug into. So why radio and what has inspired you to keep doing this? Um, radio I kind of just fell into, to be honest. I actually, um, mm. when Joy was, Joy, the station that I was a part of for so many years, they were offering a radio course to train people up to learn how to do radio programming and being an on-air announcer. At the time I was at university, I was studying uh, theatre. So I was studying acting and, and cinema studies. And uh, I remember going to the station and they asked you to fill out an application form as to what you wanted to do. And I ticked everything but being on air. It just petrified me um, getting behind the microphone because it also was a gay station and I wasn't completely out then. It kind of, I felt like mm. if I were to get behind the mic, it would automatically out me also being a gay yeah. station. So there was that big, big fear uh, around it. But the program director at the time was like, you know what, you're going on air, no excuses, Let's just do it. And um, I'm so grateful <laughs> yeah. that she did that because after then they, they couldn't shut me up. And, you know, some of my friends were like, where was that Ginny who was quiet and didn't want to go on air? Can we bring her back? I was like, sorry, guys, she, she died. <laughs> She's gone. She's gone. So, um, uh, Incidentally, what, what was the first day you started work at? Was it a Monday? <laughs> <laughs> you know what, funnily enough, first, it was a Monday. I had the grade yard shift ah! from uh, 11 to <laughs> be my coming out day monday <laughs> okay so now that we know a little bit about your your radio career and how you came out now let's talk about something that's very near and dear to a lot of sri lankans because my my uh neighbor that's behind me she's silonis and i swear to god like every freaking week she's like cooking something in there she's whipping something up that smells so good so what's your most favorite sri lankan food you know something that you can recommend and that just completely you know you can't do without oh this is this is a very tough question persis this is, this is <laughs> i'm gonna need to take it it's interesting because as a kid growing up in Sri, and i think a lot of sri lankan kids and i think indian kids can attribute to this as, as well as soon as you get home the mm-hmm. first thing your mother asks you have you eaten what have you yeah. eaten? <laughs> Go and eat. Even now, my mom, like I'm, I'm 30, I look after myself the first thing. Did you eat? Did you have a shower? Yeah, because to them, because to them, it's always like, you're always anorexic, even though you're like a 200 pound kid. <laughs> exactly. You know? it it's like, matter, yo, I, yeah. I need to stop eating those pan rolls. Exactly. I need to, I need to like, you know, portion control that. I would say Sri Lankan food, um, we like, you know how a lot of Asian cultures, they have a little bit of rice and then the meat and vegetables. We like stack on the rice and we have every single meat and vegetable on there. I would say one thing that I loved as a kid was the cashew curry. Um, oh. It was just one of those things that you ha- – it was just a be- – it, it was a cashew curry, the chicken curry, the sambal, the potato curry, the mm. roti. Like you can have that with anything. And the dal. Like different cultures make dal differently, but the way yeah. that my mum makes it and my sister now makes it, it's just – I'd go the dal because it's a vegetarian <laughs> option and the cashew curry because, you know, if you eat meat or not, those two options, the dal and the cashew curry purses, you got to try that. I'll I have got to try. Yeah, you. I have got to try it because I'm a huge cashew nut fan. So there you go. <laughs> there you I'm, go. I'm coming over to your house. I'm flying over. 
<laughs> you, look, don't play it in mine because I'm terrible. But come over to my sister. She'll make a good ketchup curry. I am well, so please. going. Yeah. Yeah. So I know what to do the next time I come to Melbourne. Yeah, I'll crash over. Yeah. No, you guys are going to come on TV with me on a Monday night. We're all going to come out. To our right? That's what we're going to do. <laughs> like, um, you, you, you're an Asian. That Like, has it been any problem in Australia for you to be a radio host? And do you have any advice for Asians wanting to get into radio in the West? Um, to be honest, and I don't mean this to sound like uh, our race or our heritage is a form of a card or, a, or an advantage that we, we have, but mm. to be honest with you, I found that my race and, and sexuality has kind of been used as a, as a, a card, not a card, but like, oh, that's a token thing. We need to, she ticks all the diversity boxes, you know, you've got the gay <laughs> Sri Lankan, <laughs> lesbian, it, 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 you know, so for me, from that aspect, because, you know, obviously Sri Lanka, uh, Homosexuality is still criminalized in Sri Lanka, so there's not many of us who probably feel so comfortable coming out as yet. Um, and, you know, I was speaking to someone in Sri Lanka, a lobbyist, and she was saying that marriage equality for them is so far down the line. They can't even think about that yet. So um, for me, no, I haven't had any trouble. Any advice, yo, get out there and, and get behind it. I think it's it's very important for our heritages as well because there's still some education that's needed within our communities and our and our. Um, you know, nationalities to know that it's not something that we use to um, rebel or anything. It's just who it is. And I know, especially in Sri Lankan cultures, marriage is seen as that way to break your class or to move up in society. But mm -hmm. sometimes everyone doesn't need to do that. Yeah, you kind of feel like a rat in an experiment, like, you know, under a magnifying glass, right? Sometimes <laughs> exactly. you, you're different, you know. Uh, are you left-handed also, by the way? <laughs> <laughs> See, I think, I, I think that's that another, the another thing that yeah that'll make it yeah different. <laughs> that would put the last nail in in the coffin for my aunties yeah. like, i'm gay and i'm left-handed there'll be devastation <laughs> now your auntie's calling all the redheads now <laughs> Jimmy's left-handed Jimmy's left-handed <laughs> Great, now that we've asked you the questions, can we like go now? We decided we don't want to be radio stars anymore. Not so fast, we still have news highlights to do. We almost forgot about that, so let's go, come on. Yeah, let's go, let's go. Right. Our first news highlight is, of course, uh, the early reactions to Marvel's Doctor Strange. And they have been positive so mm -hmm. far. So, Raven, yes, you can mm -hmm. fog your glasses even more. Um, current tweets include, Doctor Strange is pretty all-around delightful, excellent visuals, great characters, inventive use of magic, and Cumberbatch is fantastic. Uh, from film critic Halle Fuchs and film critic Wolfman B. Biani also tweets, I wouldn't put Doctor Strange in Marvel's top five but it's an entertaining movie with big ideas, gorgeous CGI, and unique action sequences. All we can say is that Raven will be camping out at her local theaters mm -hmm, to see the love of her life, Benedict, look as close to a Chinese man as possible. <laughs> yeah, it's unrequited love. <laughs> Check out the trailer. <laughs> you think you know how the world works? What if I told you the reality you know is one of many? This doesn't make any sense. Not everything does. Not everything has to. Through the mystic arts, we harness energy and shape reality. We travel great distances in an instant. How do I get from here to there? How did you become a doctor? Study and practice years ago.
There's a strength to him. But is he ready? Be careful which path you travel down, Strange. Stronger men than you have lost their way. I am death. And pain. You'll die protecting this world. I can't do this. There is no other way. I've spent so many years peering through time. Looking for you. Uh, what's this, my mantra? It's the Wi-Fi password. We're not savages. Okay, so, so besides Raven, is anyone else excited about this film? Or are we in a place where we are already tired by all these comic book films? A bit of those. I'm excited, but I'm also like, mm, I'm, I, I want to know and I want to see how how this movie is better than Captain America, you know, and how it's going to connect. I think the most exciting thing for me for the Marvel films is always to see how each new franchise connects with the larger Marvel Cinematic Universe. Uh, so I, I'll be sitting there and looking out for like clues, you know. Uh, so as long as that piece can fit and you're happy, you're just building a big puzzle. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to think too much. <laughs> I, yeah, Raven has a lot to say now. Unlike Raven. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I can't. I can't get enough of comics. I have to. I have to admit. Uh, yeah. So I think Doctor Strange for me would be quite interesting. Uh, not just because Sherlock is on screen. Because I mean, who don't want more Sherlock on screen? But he's bringing a new concept. But he's gonna look, yeah, he's looking like a Chinese man. Come on. Yeah, like everyone's looking Chinese, which means they're all looking like aliens. Like you know, <laughs> that's a new Chinese look like an alien. Ah, the future of the human race. You're all alien. I like how you diss your own kind. <laughs> Ginny, are, are you are you a are you a blockbuster comic book movie fan? Uh, I, I'm a movie fan. I'm not as cool as to be into comic books. I love Gotham, the TV show that came yeah. out. I love the first yeah. season of it because I, I, I grew up on Batman and I demanded a Batman suit as compensation for migrating <laughs> to Australia. Um, but no, I, I unfortunately am not as cool as you guys. So I, I go Doctor Strange. He sounds like a cool person. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a comic book fan, but I, I thought yeah. like it would be would that be just more or less the same as like reading a novel and then watch it like in a movie? Like, I would like to see that in movies when I read a book that I like. Sometimes it's hard to say because usually comic book oh. films, it's <clears throat> always hit and miss. Some comic book films are able to really literally translate the look and feel and the mood of an actual comic book. Like I think the one that mm. one of the best ones I've seen is The Crow. Um, which was this this cult film from the 90s, which starred Bruce Lee's son, Lee's son. Brandon. Oh, okay. yeah, and then Brandon he died, Lee. right, in a movie. Yeah. yeah. Like, mm. I mean, um, if, uh, if, if and Batman with Christopher mm. Nolan, I think mm. his version really did justice um, to the newer versions of Batman that came out in the 90s. So with Marvel also, I think uh, a lot of the times they mm. actually hit the nail on the head. Uh, but you know, it's really, it's really, mm. you know, something that's hit or miss. We don't know until the film comes out. With Doctor Strange, I think they mm-hmm. may have hit the nail on the head. But then again, um, mm. this is a story about Asian characters. So seeing <laughs> about Asian characters who don't look Asian. Exactly. So I don't know how good this is going to be. <laughs> you know. Yeah, but he, they will introduce a new element to the Marvel universe. It's like going to the next phase, the the use of mm. magic. So at least we get yeah. to see more special effects yeah. instead of Wanda like doing weird stuff with her hands. I can never figure out the hand <laughs> motions. What is she? Just doing. doing weird stuff with the hands makes me think of something else. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I always prefer like kung fu, like anything else. Like, <laughs> doesn't yeah. surprise to me. Okay, let's uh, move on to the next news highlight. In our second highlight, Shailene Woodley isn't holding it back. Yep, that's right. The Divergent Star opened up about her recent arrest in an essay 
published by Time Magazine on Thursday. Check this out! Shailene Woodley will not be silenced and instead has taken to her Insta to continue her fight against the construction of the Dakota Access Pipeline. Shailene Woodley garnered national attention when she was publicly arrested for criminal trespassing during a peaceful protest at the Dakota Access Pipeline. The entire confrontation between her and the police was caught on Facebook Live, which then resulted in an incredible outpour of support for Shailene. While being escorted by the police, she told tens of thousands of live viewers, quote, so everybody knows we were going to our vehicle, which they had all surrounding and waiting for me with giant guns and a giant truck behind them just so they could arrest me. I hope you're watching mainstream media. Since the ordeal, Shailene has been released from prison and is now speaking out again, this time via social media. Shailene took to her Instagram to once again protest the construction of the Dakota Access Pipeline, writing, quote, one day, baby, we'll sing our poetry. The words dripping from our tongues, wet with ripened patience, and the lyrics, the sweet fruits born from the seeds our aging hands are now sowing. I gotta say that not mentioning anything about her confrontation with police and instead relying on poetry to continue to stand up for a cause that she so passionately believes in is the type of strength that is truly admirable. So what do you guys think? Oh, man. I think after I watched that video, I thought that uh, of Shalene being arrested, I thought it was pretty unfair because she wasn't the only one who was, you know, protesting. There were at least a hundred people out there who were also protesting about how the pipelines were going to be, you know, going across uh, North Dakota and actually uh, they would be built into these Native American reservations. And it's not the first time that, you know, the U.S. government has built um, pipelines and stuff and practically just completely trespassed Native American uh, territory. I really think it's unfair. I, but I think because she's famous, they're just trying to make a, a statement out of it. Yeah, but uh, isn't it like uh, good for the protesters? If you arrest someone famous, then people's going to read about it. Like that, <laughs> that doesn't sound like a very smart thing to do <laughs> from their perspective. I know, but and that's why it blew up in the face and that's why it's become so ridiculous because by arresting someone so famous, right, um, it actually it actually did the complete opposite. It actually brought more awa awareness. Yeah, so people right? know yeah. more about it, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I kind of respect her more in a way. To be honest, I don't really know much about her. I didn't really follow her work. I might have watched one Divergent movie mm -hmm. or two. That's, that's pretty much all I know about her. But at least, you know, she she really, like... She's, she's not just, like, uh, paying lip service to, like, oh, I want to save the world, I want to help the world, like, you know, like some charity stuff. She actually goes out and do it. And and she stands by her... Her mm. word stands by her principles. I think that's what... Um, what I respect about her. So, and yeah, and it took someone like her, a white non-native woman being arrested, you know, in North Do uh, Dakota or mm. Indigenous People's mm. Day to bring this cause to everyone's attention. I think there are people who have protests against that, but it's like, you know, on social media, hey, this is, and sharing, but people don't, but she's the only one who actually go out there and like, you know, join the pickup fans and get herself arrested and, and then make her speech. And she's, and get her voice out there, she really goes out and do it. I think that's what, you know, I mean, changed my perception of her. Yeah, she's actually, you know, one, one of the good things is that basically, it's so, it's, it, Shalane is actually a very, in a way, she's a hipster. Um, she's been known to be vegetarian and she's been known to eat clay. I don't know. Wait, eat clay? Yeah. She goes out on like these random hikes into nature and then like picks out berries oh, and stuff. Yikes. So she's really into like the environment and, you know, preserving people's cultures and stuff like that. And she's left-handed? <laughs> yeah. She's yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> No, but uh, like like um the, the in the article saying that the um, in America the people don't really know about the indigenous people people don't care much about it and but uh, in Australia you also have the Aboriginal people so what's the general sentiment towards them like is the government doing anything uh, what exactly the general policy that's a very good question I think with with us the the, the Aboriginal people I mean it was a while before our government actually apologized to them I think it was. 2008 or 2007 where our prime minister who is the equivalent of the president said to the aboriginal people we're really sorry for what um the previous yeah. governments did to apologize to you i have to say like 
our federal government at the moment, obviously there's still that debate going on about gay marriage and marriage equality, but our state government, um, Daniel Andrews, he actually, he's kind of like our governor or premier as we call it back there, he actually apologised recently, recently to uh, the LGBT community who mm. were criminalised. Mm. So I think in that way, in terms of Indigenous people, I think mm. I think there's still work to be done, mm. but I think that initial step of apologising and acknowledging, look, we did do some serious wrongs to Mm. the people which have impacted their life so so much like so excessively that we can't comprehend it Mm. um i would like to think we're on our way there's work to be done but i'd I'd say we're on our way (laughs) (laughs) everything you said they already knew more or less so here's something that you didn't know two of those special atomic bombs haven't gone off school i was somewhat a nomad i had one best friend chingling whom i make frequent references to in all of my podcasts we would spend our lunch breaks either helping out at the canteen as good year 12 leaders would do to set an example of philanthropy actually let's be honest it was really because we got free food you know shit gets real when every lunchtime you would hear Sorry for the interruption, but could Chingaling and Ginny please make their way to the canteen for duty, please? That's Chingaling and Ginny to the canteen for duty, please. Now we've come to the part of the Ginny show where we'll play a game called The Ginny Face with our tomboy hostages here. Fun, isn't it? I want my mommy! <laughs> That's right. In this game, I will give you four scenarios where you'll react by snapping a picture of yourselves on our Ginny phone. You will upload these reaction photos to me, the guardian of this galaxy, and the one with the best reaction will score a point from me. And who knows, you might just be able to win your freedom from this radio station. But this is an audio podcast. No one listening will be able to see these Ginny faces. What, what are you talking about? Of course, you, your listeners, will not be able to see these reaction pictures because I will be putting it on my website to teach you guys a lesson for breaking and entry. Let me get your Ginny phone. Be right back. Okay, this sucks. How did our grand plan to be the world's best radio DJ become an exercise in utter Ginny humiliation? <sighs> because we're geniuses. <sighs> but seriously, guys, if she's giving us all a Ginny phone for this stupid game, we can call City and she can help bring reinforcements to rescue us. Oh, 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 yeah. I didn't think about that good idea, Persis. Your brain is like unbreakable tofu. Uh, yes, it comes from being an ex-tofu addict. Took me years of rehab to get over my tofu cravings. Ah, <sighs> Sometimes, late at night, I get nightmares of tofu haunting me in the night. Oh, shh, 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 shh. Here comes Ginny. Okay. Here's your Ginny phones. Now, no hanky panky, okay? Are you ready to play Ginny Face? Uh, yes. yes. Yes, wherever. Mm, yeah. oh. Right, ladies, you're gonna have to show more enthusiasm or your radio career is going down to tank. Uh, okay, okay. 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 Yeah, 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 yeah. That's better now. Okay, guys, now remember, you have to distract her while I send City a WhatsApp message. Okay. Now. Your first scenario is... Donald Trump has just called you guys nasty women. Oh, Ooh. we have to snap a face oh. now. Ooh. I am not a happy trooper. <laughs> <laughs> nasty woman? Yeah, okay. <laughs> that is your Ginny face. Joanna's looks a little bit more. It's getting warmer. Uh, hang on. Wait, wait. Okay. Persis, your selfie looks like you've been impaled. (laughs) (laughs) Joanna, you look like, you look like, (laughs) Joanna, you look like someone's just taken your coffee and you're about to like gouge their eyes out. (laughs) (laughs) Uh Uh-oh. I think I didn't get the memo because I'm the one who is actually happy about being caught nasty. (laughs) (laughs) I'll send it to you guys. 
guys right now. I'm actually happy about being called nasty. Yeah. Hey, there we go. <laughs> Miss Raven, if you're nasty, there you go. That's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm nasty. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, y- well, you guys failed that miserably, didn't you? That's nowhere near the Ginny. What? <laughs> no, no, no. It's, it's very original. I like it. Impalement, uh, violence, and happiness. What a trio you three make. <laughs> So you have to judge now who who wins this round. I'm going to give it to, look, impaling is not a pleasant experience, I'm assuming. It's never happened to me. So um, between, I would have to say between you and Joanna, I, I'm, I'm going to give it to Joanna. Yay! Joanna. That's like, that, that's borderline, that's borderline serial killer meets. I'm on my way to the Ginny face, but I just need to be pissed off a little bit more. <laughs> All right, next scenario. Right, ladies, your second scenario is... Beyonce has just told you that you're going to be her new backup dancers. Oh, my God. Hey. (laughs) I am so not enthusiastic (laughs) about this. (laughs) I have the opposite reactions for everyone. (laughs) Okay, let me me just try. (laughs) Persis is happy. (laughs) <laughs> Raven is so weird. <laughs> She's not enthusiastic. I can't dance. Why do you guys want to make me dance? The only, the only time I can dance if you like make me drunk, like you know, that, and that's still not good dancing. That is like at least I believe I can dance, but it doesn't yeah. mean that I can actually dance. <laughs> Ooh. Okay, so I've only got uh, Ravens and yours. I haven't seen George. Oh yeah, it's about, about uh, Raven. Ravens head. Above Raven, yeah. Above yeah. Raven. Yeah. Above my face. <laughs> Alright. I'm gonna have to I'm gonna give this one to Raven. Because I don't think Beyonce's ever gotten that reaction before when they asked people. <laughs> so that yeah. that, is, <laughs> that is like no. Yeah, get me out of here. No. That's, that's hilarious. Awesome. And your very last scenario mm. is Ruby Rose has just asked you to come be her official podcast groupies. Ooh. Maybe I should have gone with something like you've been invited to a comic film premiere or something. <laughs> okay, thinking about... Okay, I got the reaction. I'm trying to anger my, my, my phone. Ah, help. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Very strange face. Yeah. There's been a progression of serial killer in Joanna in these shots. It's, it's quite amusing. <laughs> Yeah. Joanne, that's strange. Okay, this is actually probably going to be our most normal photo, I think. <laughs> Somewhat normal, okay? I know. <laughs> I'm going to give this one to, to uh, Persis. That's, um, that, that's, a, that's a killer photo for Ruby Rose. <laughs> it's like, hi, Ruby Rose. What are you wearing? Is yeah, that kind of thing? Like, to CD for reinforcements? Yes, yes, all settled. She should be arriving any minute. What the hell is that? Show's over, Ginny. We are officially off the air. Aha! It's our reinforcements. Ours to be precise. Now you're toast, Ginny. <laughs> Not. I've got reinforcements of my own. My fans! Come on in, guys! Get those tomboys! Oh, wow. We're outnumbered! Run, guys, run!
think we escaped the genie show fan mob? Yeah, I I'm sorry I was thrown out in that first attack. No worries. At least we got a free genie phone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nice. We have free data roaming and SMSs for the next month. Woohoo. Thanks, genie. Well, folks, we've come to the end of another wacky episode of Tomboy T-Rod. If you want to hear more of us, don't forget to subscribe to Tomboy T-Rod on iTunes and Stitcher. The show is also available for free streaming on our website, where you'll find all sorts of stuff on being a funny geek tomboy in space-time today. Check it out at www.tomboy-tarts.com That's right! And if you just want to connect with us outside of the show, we are on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube and Tumblr. Just like Tomboy Tarts! And if you want to do a little bit more and advertise, collaborate or appear on this podcast or our blog, then drop us an email at hello, hello at tomboy-tarts.com. Everybody, that's hello, hello at tomboy-tarts.com because we are everywhere, 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 and nowhere at the same time. See you in another two weeks with a brand new episode here with Raven Tarsus City and myself, Joanna. Until then, everyone, ciao! ciao. And adios, adios. Bye. amigos! Bye. Bye. Bye.